The service of evening prayer for this 11th Tuesday after Pentecost begins on page 117 of the Book of Common Prayer, if you'd like to follow along. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. The psalm appointed for this evening is Psalm 94. O Lord, God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, show yourself. Rise up, O judge of the world. Give the arrogant their just deserts. How long shall the wicked, O Lord, how long shall the wicked triumph? They bluster in their insolence. All evildoers are full of boasting. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your chosen nation. They murder the widow and the stranger and put the orphans to death. Yet they say the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob takes no notice. Consider well, you dullards among the people. When will you fools understand? He that planted the ear does he not hear? He that formed the eye does he not see? He who admonishes the nations will he not punish? He who teaches all the world has he no knowledge? The Lord knows our human thoughts, how like a puff of wind they are. Happy are they whom you instruct, O Lord, whom you teach out of your law to give them rest in evil days until a pit is dug for the wicked. For the Lord will not abandon his people, nor will he forsake his own. For judgment will again be just, and all the true of heart will follow it. Who rose up Who rose up for me against the wicked? Who took my part against the evildoers? If the Lord had not come to my help, I should soon have dwelt in the land of silence. As often as I said my foot has slipped, your love, O Lord, upheld me. When many cares fill my mind, your consolations cheer my soul. Can a corrupt tribunal have any part with you, one which frames evil into law? They conspire against the life of the just and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold, and my God the rock of my trust. He will turn their wickedness back upon them and destroy them in their own malice. The Lord our God will destroy them. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The scripture reading for this evening is taken from the Gospel according to John in the third chapter. Jesus and his disciples went into the Judean countryside, and he spent some time there with them and baptized. John was also baptizing at Aon near Salim, because water was abundant there, and people kept coming and were baptized. John, of course, had not yet been thrown into prison. Now a discussion about purification arose between John's disciples and a Jew. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, the one who was with you across the Jordan, to whom you testified, here he is baptizing, and all are going to him. John answered, No one can receive anything except what has been given from heaven. You yourselves are my witnesses that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I have been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the bridegroom. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. For this reason my joy has been fulfilled. He must increase, but I must decrease. The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is of the earth belongs to the earth and speaks about earthly things. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard Yet no one accepts his testimony. Whoever has accepted his testimony has certified this, that God is true. He whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. 
The Father loves the Son and has placed all things in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life. Whoever disobeys the Son will not see life, but must endure God's wrath. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The canticle for this evening is Canticle 15, the Song of Mary, the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The scripture passage for this Tuesday, the 11th Tuesday after Pentecost, takes us into John's telling of the good news. We're in the third chapter. We've been introduced to, to John the baptizer, and now we're hearing about Jesus as he's beginning just to come on the scene himself. This is after John's testimony about the one whom he saw the Spirit descending on him like a dove. It's always John's telling. This third chapter of John is familiar to many of us, primarily for what precedes our reading this evening, the visit of Nicodemus to Jesus in the middle of the night. But that story continues in the good news to the part that we hear today. The next day, as John is out with his disciples and Jesus is starting to do his beginnings of his ministry, also baptizing, we hear about a discussion, a, a disagreement, if you will, about uh, John's disciples and a Jew about the rites of purification. In other words, this is one more occasion in which groups are fighting with, you, with each other about how are we supposed to do this, in this particular case, the water purification or baptism or mikvah. How are they supposed to do that administration and who is allowed to and who shouldn't be? And the discussion arises, isn't this the one over there whom you said? Why is he getting to do this? Aren't you concerned, John, that everyone is going over to this person named Jesus? And we hear John's response. We have the telling of this good news after Pentecost to remind us about what this good news means in our lives as disciples. And this week is no different. It would be easy for us at times to get caught up with controversies or arguments over how we worship, when we worship, with whom we're worshiping. All the particularities, we find those roots precede even the New Testament itself. But even more, John's response is meant for each of us. Instead of John being concerned about all the crowds starting to go to Jesus, we hear him say this particular line, which is so beautiful, and yet it's rather obscure in the whole sense of the good news. He says, my joy has been fulfilled. Hearing the voice of the bridegroom of Jesus in this image that John is telling his own disciples and this Jewish person who is having this controversial conversation, he's saying, my joy is complete because of the ones whose voice I am hearing. He must increase and I must decrease. I think these words are very powerful for our own discipleship journey because Christianity is unique among the world's religions for a number of reasons, but one of which is the very fact that the deeper you get into following Jesus, following this way of love, following this new life, the rest of your old self starts to disappear. The whole goal of Christianity is becoming selfless in our love, not self-centered, not self-absorbed, 
not self-obsessed, which is what that controversy that precedes that line was all about. Aren't you upset by this person, this upstart coming around? And John is saying, no, he must increase, I must decrease. In our own discipleship, my old self must decrease. The love of Jesus must increase. The deeper into following Jesus, the less of my old self needs to be front and center until I love completely selflessly. Those are noble words and a goal that we take the rest of our life as disciples to live into. There is good news as we start this journey with John to realize we are in good company, to realize the last of the Old Testament prophets sets our own path with Jesus in the right direction. May Jesus increase and we decrease. Amen. Let us affirm our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, he was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. For this evening, let us use Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Grant to us, Lord, we pray, the Spirit to think and do always those things that are right, that we who cannot exist without you may by you be enabled to live according to your will through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord Jesus, stay with us, for evening is at hand and the day is past. Be our companion in the way, kindle our hearts and awaken hope, that we may know you as you revealed in Scripture and the breaking of bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. S tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. This week, let us have compassion on those who have commended themselves to our prayers, remembering, especially this week, Binny. Bob, Gary, Lauren, Marette, Phil, Sandy, Susan, and all those affected by natural disasters and human tragedies, the first responders and the aid and relief efforts that continue around the world, especially for everyone affected by the coronavirus. And let us pray for the whole human family. O oh God, you made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your Son, Look with compassion on the whole human family. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. 
break down the walls that separate us and unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I invite your own intercessions and thanksgivings offered at this time. For all these and those we've named in our hearts, let us give over to God as we use the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercy that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all peace in believing that so that we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen.